Thank you. Let's turn our Bibles to two places today. Two places. First, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 18. And then second, Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 18. And second, Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. The title of the message is Sin in the Camp. Sin in the Camp. It could be part one. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover everything. So it could be part one. Next week, it could be part two. Sin in the Camp. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 18. The Bible says, Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. Let's go to Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. The Bible says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the cursed thing, for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zebdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the cursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Brother Keller, can you please pray for the message? Yeah, well, thank you for another opportunity where we can meet with Father Derek. Some people, some brothers and sisters who can join us today because of their health, we pray that you please be with them, Lord, uh, put your healing hands upon them, and be, uh, help them to recover quickly so they can join us once more. Father, as we sit here, Today. Uh, we want to praise you, Lord. That's why we're here today. Help us to keep our focus on that. Keep our priority as you, Lord. Uh, keep you as our priority. As we're listening to the preaching that Pastor Jay prepared, Lord, Father, we pray that you please be with us and be with Pastor Jay, fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Uh, give him the words that he needs to yes. say to convict our hearts, Lord. Uh, we know that you're in it. Father, please be with it. our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts, open our ears. Be with us for the rest of the day, Lord. Help us really learn from this and change. Yes. And help us realize that every single preaching is for is for us, Lord. And every single person, Father, please help us realize that in Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. Sin in the camp. Joshua chapter seven talks about the sin of Achan. This is a great chapter on revival. And when it is preached, many of the times you've heard title always sin in the camp. It is a chapter that deals with sin, how sin affects others, how sin will be always uncovered. Sin has consequences. It is a picture of how a church, a school, a ministry can suffer because of one disobedient Christian. As we saw in Ecclesiastes 9.18, one sinner destroyeth much good. Let's get this out of the way. You, if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, no matter what happens, you're going to heaven. Amen. That's it. No ifs and buts. But you're in the body of Christ. And what you do for the Lord will affect the body of Christ. As a one Christian, you could destroy the ministry. As a one Christian, you could make your family suffer. As a one Christian, you could do something that devil wants you to do. Yeah. Many times, churches get destroyed not because of outside influences. Churches get destroyed because of inside, internal people. Because people become disobedient. People become aching. The real question is, are you aching? I mean, if you don't even know who aching is, go study your Bible. You have to. You know, it's a very famous story. I'm not here to belittle you. I'm not here to put you down. You might be a baby Christian. You have to study the Bible. And you have to learn from the lessons in the Old Testament. The sin of Achan was so significant that innocent people died because of him. Because of your sins, innocent people will die. Whether it's physically or whether it's, you know, spiritually speaking. They become dead Christians because of you. And you know who you are today. You don't have to look around. You have to look at yourself. Yes. Always look at yourself. You know, if you thought right away that, yeah, 
I know this brother. I know this sister. I know, you know, they've been gossiping, blabbering. You know, I know what they've done inside the church, outside the church. You know, maybe people know. But if you thought like that, you're that person. You're that Aiken. You don't know what's going on inside of you. You don't know the things that you try to cover with dirt like Aiken did. So you yourself have to realize that, man, I could be that Aiken today. Just because I try to live holy and compared to others, you become overconfident, you become proud, you become haughty, and you become that person. You become that person who destroys the church ministry, who brings bad testimony to the church, and you also destroy your family and your family's friends and everybody else. And that's you. I mean, you. You're the one who has a problem. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. has always said the problem is with you. Why do you always have to blame others for it? It's how I grew up. I'm sorry how you grew up. But at the end of the the day, you can make a decision for yourself. And especially if you're over 18, you know, if you're an adult, you can make decisions for yourself in this country. Yes. You don't have to be swayed by influences of other people. You know what's the worst thing that you could hear in any kind of ministry? You hear things like grooming, right? You hear very, very sad instances, terrible instances, bad influences, where you know, maybe it's a Sunday school teacher, maybe it's a pastor or a preacher. You know, they groom people, and they get involved, and they get brainwashed. And that one person who commits those things not only destroys that person who he or she have groomed, destroys the whole family and destroys the church ministry. When churches do go through split, there's always a main you know, perpetrator. And with that main perpetrator, there are other perpetrators who gets involved as well. And with that other perpetrator, they have their family members who doesn't know anything. But when the judgment comes from the Lord, what happens? Perpetrator gets revealed, just like Achan. Other people around that perpetrator's life, they get destroyed, just like that. And you Achans out there today, I mean, everybody is an Achan in some sort of a way, unless yes. you're perfect. You better get right with the Lord. Amen. You better understand that each time you commit sin, it affects others. If you truly care for other people, you will understand that the sin that I'm going to commit right now, I'm debating about committing, will affect others. It's going to affect my husband, my wife, my children, my family, my church, and above all, it's going to affect the body of Christ. If you don't get serious about it, there's reason why I'm preaching. There's reason why you're listening. Because there's some person or people here and who's listening is completely acting like Aiken right now. Yes. The more you hide, the harder it's going to be when the Lord reveals it. Right. As we go through Joshua chapter 7, just ask yourself, you know, who, who am I? I mean, where do I stand in this church, in this ministry, at home? You know, where do I stand? This principle where one person, one sinner destroys as much good is prevalent in the scriptures. You don't have to go there. Ecclesiastes 10, 1 said, Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking favor. So does a little folly, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Galatians 5, 9, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Just a little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. You know, when you look at ingredients for rat poison, like 99 point some, some, some percent is all good, but they put that little bit of poison, and that poison, that chemical, can kill the rat, can kill it, whatever it is it's intended to kill. You are that rat poison. You are that chemical. I mean, you might not realize that. 
you are that leaven that's just trying to grow. Amen. Right? Yes. You know, if you see some food that gets moldy, you still leave it in the refrigerator, it's going to grow. Right. Even in the refrigerator. Yes. Obviously, if you put it outside, you know, you see it right away. Many of you Christians are that refrigerated mold. Yeah. Refrigerated thing just Good. in there. You, you are growing, but you're like, oh, you know, no one's going to open that refrigerator because they know that refrigerator, everything inside the refrigerator is supposed to be good. It's supposed to be okay to eat. But it's growing. It's growing. You could hide. Yeah. But you could hide from me. You could hide from your family. You could hide from everybody. But one thing for sure is that you can never hide from God. Amen. God is just watching you, watching your every move, watching your every heart, watching every mind decision that you're making. And you're a fool that you think you could keep your mouth and it's not going to be revealed. Well, I mean, look at Aiken. We're going to see it more in the later. First of all, if you're saved, you're going to have that Holy Spirit conviction. You're going to have that guilty conscience. right? I don't even know how you could live through it in the first place. It's like Holy Spirit keep on pricking you, you know. It's like poking you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't make me sad, you know. You keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. But you're fighting against the Holy Ghost. And, and I know some of you are very guilty right now. If you do not change, if you don't, a lot of people are guilty. A lot of people have guilty conscience. Look at Judas, right? Look at Pharaoh. They all have guilty conscience. But at the end of the day, they did not repent. And they're burning in hell. I mean, thank God that if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior in the new, I mean, in the church age, you won't have to burn in hell. Amen. But you will have to pay for your yes. sins. You reap what you sow. Go to Galatians chapter 6. The more you hide the worse it's going to get. I mean, later in the story in Joshua chapter 7, Achan already knew that what he did was wrong. He knew. And he had a chance to confess his sins before it was revealed to the whole congregation of, you know, how many people? Well, one, uh, one million people. Think about it. You yourself have to understand your sin will be revealed to millions of people one day. Yes. You will confess it in front of people, and you will pay for your sin. Achan confessed it. Achan said, you know what? You know, it was me. He had no chance to give excuse anyways, mm -hmm. right? You yourself will have no chance to give excuse because God will show everything, everything that Achan, Achan stole from God those accursed things. It was revealed. Right? Gold, silver, garments, you know, they were all revealed. I mean, he put it under his tent, right? Under the dirt. Yes. But it's going to be revealed, right? And God, you know, he's so perfect. You know, when God specifically shows the people, it's as scientific as it gets. Yeah. Out of those, you know, million plus, you know, Israelites, you know, he goes by the tribes, he goes by the family, wow. you know, he goes by the, you know, everything that we saw here, right? You know, and then pinpoints to the person who did it. Detail. Yeah. And you think you're, you think you're fine? No. Playing with that fire right now? No, sir. You're going to burn yourself and your whole family. Yes. I guarantee you, you know, being in the ministry for, you know, 25 plus years, no one ever has gotten away with it. Zero person. No one will ever get away with it. Zero person. You will be caught. And God will judge you. And God will use men of God to judge you. Yes. That's why you know, I went over some of the things on 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It's a good chapter to go to. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it talks about you know, church discipline and everything. It has to be there. If you go to school, 
if you break the law, I mean break the rules, you get suspended or expelled, right? Yes. You get detention, you know? Yes. You're at work, you break the rules, mm -hmm. you get fired, right. or you go to jail. Yes. Right? Why is that so different from church? Church is not your vanity club. Right. Where you just come, have your fun, do every, anything that you want and you think it's okay. And especially our local church is bought with Christ's blood. Amen. Yes. I mean, this is blood-bought church. Amen. It's more special than million schools out there. It's more special than million, you know, workplaces out there. Right. It's the most special place. And you think that you could just play around with it without any consequences? Sin in the camp should let you realize right away there's going to be consequences to my actions no matter what. Yes. If you don't realize it right now, I'm, I'm sorry. You're going to be like Aiken. It'll be too late. I mean, honestly, I don't know what happened to Aiken, you know, afterwards, spiritually speaking, because he confessed, right? Yes. He was, you know, honest about it, how first about it. But physically, he had to get punished because he disobeyed God. He had that accursed thing. So he had to die. You yourself know that Romans 8.13 says, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. That's what the Bible says. Talking to new Christians. You die. Ah, you know, that's not going to happen to me. Yeah, that will happen to you. It always happens to people who think that it's not going to happen to me. You know? People always use the word never, never, never. Only thing never that I could guarantee is that I'll never burn in hell. Amen. Because I trust that Christ as my Lord and Savior. But every other never can happen to you and me. So don't, don't be naive. Don't be so haughty about it. And when we see here, go to verse 1. The Bible says, at the end of the verse 1, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. That's a corporate. It's a whole group. Whole nation. Because of one person. Because of one person's action, the whole group has committed a trespass. Think about it. You committing that sin right now, you're committing a trespass for the whole body of Christ. That's you. You are that person causing the whole corporation to sin. But technically speaking, right, it was just one man because Bible says, for Achan took up the cursed thing, but one man's sin was charged to the whole group. You just have to think, my actions, it's not just me. It's going to affect everybody, no matter what. Yes. Whether it be good or bad, right? You are a good testimony for Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to affect people in the right way. If you're a bad testimony for Jesus Christ, it's going to affect the people in the wrong way. Look what happened to David. Right? Prime example. I mean, David, you don't have to go there. You know, you could write it down and go study it. David in 2 Samuel chapter 24 and the 1 Chronicle 21, in his pride, he numbered the men in Israel who were eligible. You heard about David numbering. He numbered the men in Israel who were eligible to go to war. Why did he do that? Oh, you sound like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Let's know how many people we have to fight the battle. But what was his motive? So that he could brag about the size of his army. The whole along, how did David get victory? How did Joshua get victory? It's because of captain of the Lord. Amen. Because of God. 
That's it. Yes. It's not about the numbers. Right. It's not about how much talent you have. It's not about how much knowledge you have. It's not about how good you are. It's not about how well you sing. It's not about how well you play instrument. It's not about how well about how you talk to people, how persuasive you are. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if the Lord does not bless it, you're not going anywhere. Right. David, in his pride, he numbered the men of Israel who were eligible to go to war so that he could brag about it, the size of the army. What was the result? Did God just say, hey, David, you know, don't do it. You know, slap on the back of the hand. No. As a result, not tens, not hundreds, thousands of people die because of his action. That was God's judgment. David said it in 1 Chronicles 21, 17. I, it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Well, they, don't, they haven't done nothing, right? They're innocent. But David's sin involved the people. Your sin will involve people. Your sin will involve saved and unsaved people. I mean, that's the principle we see here in the Word of God. You run into the same thing with Adam. You know, we're all going to have a long line in heaven, right? You know, Adam and Eve. I mean, we're going to have, you know, millions, if not billions, people just waiting in line, asking same question over and over and over, yeah? Why'd you do it? You know? Yeah. Why'd you do it? You know? You know? I mean, the Bible tells the reason why Adam did it. I mean, he loved the woman, you know, but go to Eve, right? Why'd you do it? Was it worth it? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, you know what? I mean, you probably could create, you know, like, I don't know, tens of questions, hundreds of questions, you know. Yes. Did you know if you didn't do it, you know, <laughs> sin wouldn't have come into the world? You know, did you know? I mean, if you're ladies, right, I didn't have to go through child labor, right? You know, the guys are, you know what, you know, I didn't have to, you know, go through this toils of the, you know, yeah. and my life and stuff. Because there's going to be a long line. Because Romans 5.12 says what? There, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Amen. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned right. because of Adam. And if we go any deeper in the doctrinal study, that's systematic theology as federal hardship. Headship, headship, I'm sorry. Federal headship. Adam's here. But thank God, because of Lord Jesus Christ, we can have eternal security. Amen. We can have that salvation because yes. of that one person. Amen. I mean, does it ring a bell now? How much of an influence a single person has? Yes. One person brought the sin into the world. One person took away sins of the world. You can bring sin to multiple people, or you can take away you know, don't go out there, oh, yeah, oh, I could forgive people. No. You could help stop people from sinning, or you could help people to sin. Right. Simple as that. I mean, think about it. The Bible says, For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one whom? Jesus Christ. You and I have eternal life because of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, right? We're condemned, already condemned to die in hell. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift. Think about it's free. I mean, how much better can it be, right? Eternal security being free, eternal salvation being free. Free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Yeah. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Romans Amen. 5, 15 through 19. And now we understand this federal headship doctrine. We understand that one person can destroy much. Let's go to verse 2. 
Joshua chapter 7, verse 2. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. Now, what's happening here? When we looked at verse 1, the Lord was already angry. He's angry with the whole nation. But Joshua doesn't know it yet. Joshua doesn't know it. A lot of times, you know, leaders of the church don't know it yet. Because God's giving chances. You know, we, we have, you know, conversations here. Once Pastor Kim knows and once I know, that means everybody knows. Literally everybody knows what's been going on. And a lot of times it's not the good stuff. You know, good stuff comes to our ears pretty quick. But when it comes to sin that's going on inside the church, inside the camp, we hear it. Why do we hear it like at the last minute? You know, why? Because God's giving you mercy and grace to get right. God's giving Achan all this time to get right. Confess your sins. Get right. Get right. Get right. But human nature a lot of times is what? I haven't gotten punished it, so I think I could get away with it. Criminals. Yes. You Christians are just like criminals. Amen. You sin against God. Yeah. You steal from God. And this yeah. is what Achan did. He's, see, he stole from God. And you're like, I could get away with that. You know, I'm just going to put some dirt over it. It's going to be okay. It's not going to hurt me. You don't know it, right? I mean, there's illustration. There's a little mice. You know, it was put into a, you know, like where the snakes are. And mice saw that snake was sleeping. And man, if, if that snake wakes up, it's going to eat me alive. Yes. You know? So the mice was thinking, I have to do something. What can I do? So he started putting all the dirt over the snake. You know, I'm going to put that you know, dirt over the snake. I don't see snake anymore. You know? I don't see the snake anymore. Right? And a little later, a snake wakes up. And snake comes over. And snake, there's two you know, conclusions to this story. Right? Snake comes over and eats the mice. You're done. Or someone comes out and rescues the mice from the snake. And that's usually the picture of you know, God rescuing you from your sin. Amen. But the first picture is you destroying yourself because yes. of sin. Lord was angry, going back to Joshua chapter 7, with the whole nation right now. But Joshua doesn't know it. So Joshua sends a man ahead to you know, reconnaissance mission. But when we talk about AI, you know, they had a great victory over Jericho, you know, in chapter 6. So people are very, very confident. You know, they're like, whenever something you think you accomplished and not giving credit to God, you become proud and you become haughty. Just, that's just a natural thing. That's why you have to stay humble and give credit to God for every little thing. Yes. The fact that you could listen to me the fact that you could read the word of God, the fact that you could breathe, the fact that you could sit and not be hurt, the fact that you could stand, the fact that, you know, you could you still be able to, you know, dry, you have to give glory to God. You have to give credit to God. However minimal it is, you have to give credit to God. Yes. That's why there are so few Christians who live even a closer to a holy life because they're never thankful for even the little things. They're only thankful for big things. 
I prayed for this job and God gave it to me. Thank you, Lord. But you never thank God for anything else. Yeah. I prayed for a mate and God gave me this person to marry. Thank you, Lord. I'm so sick. You know, Lord healed me and he healed you. But everything else, every little thing, the fact that you could wake up every day, Amen. the fact that you could fall asleep every day, the fact that you have a, you know, roof, the fact that you could even talk and make sounds. Yes. You don't give, thank, you don't give thanks to God for all of those, do you? I mean, who thank God that you could, you're able to breathe today? Right when you woke up, you said, thank you, Lord, that I'm able to breathe today. Who thank God that, Lord, thank you that I could see today. I could hear my alarm today so that I could wake up. Amen. I mean, how many of you guys thank the Lord? One, two, most likely, you know, very low percentage. Why? Because you're just an unthankful person. Yes. Period. That's your old nature always controlling you. Yes. New nature gives all the glory to God. New nature is always thinking about fellowship with Lord. New nature always thinks about how can I do to please the Lord. New nature for every little thing, even one step I take and I don't fall and get hurt, you give glory to God. Amen. New nature is just like Nehemiah. Always in a constant prayer, instant prayer. Always, always, always. Because what is prayer? It's conversation between you and God. Amen. You and Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You're constantly talking. I mean, did anybody ever thought you were crazy? Because you're walking by yourself and you're talking to the Lord. Well, some people do. You know? I mean, you're literally having conversation. You know? You're having prayer while you're walking. I mean... Think about it. Think about your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ right now. Again, now going back to it, town of Ai is so small, population-wise, that Joshua's men figure they won't have any trouble taking it. Why? Right now, they just have victory at Jericho. You know, it's almost like this. Like, yeah, you know, you're in a war. Say you're fighting against, you know, maybe back in the World War, you just defeated, you know, Germany. And you're like, and the, it's time for you to fight against, what's a small country, you know, in Europe? Maybe Denmark, right? Very tiny. Oh, Luxembourg. I think it's one of the tiniest. Yeah, you know, we just defeated mighty Germany. Now we're fighting Luxembourg. You know, we're going to win. You know, we're going to win. You know, they're very small. Because at most, they had like, you know, 12,000 people and 6,000 able men, you know, to fight. That's why verse 3, it shows the pride and arrogance. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or 3,000 men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. They are so proud and puffed up. I mean, as you read it, I mean, you could see. I mean, well, where was, you know, Lord, please help us defeat this, you know, mighty nation, mighty country. No. They were so proud and puffed up. They are telling the commander-in-chief, Joshua, how to conduct the assault. Right? Many times, you get so proud and puffed up, you don't care about what the Bible says anymore. You don't care about what the council's leaders are telling you from the church, right? You're like, I know how to do it. That's your attitude. Don't bother me. I know how to do it. I mean, parents, you already see it from your kids, right? Your high school kids, kids going through their puberty. You know, you try to tell them to do anything. They're like, Mommy, I know how to do it. Yes. Daddy, I know how to do it. Don't bother me. You know, you, know, you don't need to be involved in my life, you know? I know, I could get all things done. But they forget, these Israelites. Israelites forget. Who's the supreme commander here right now? Joshua. Joshua is the supreme commander, not them. That's what happens a lot of times. You know, when sin gets hold of you, you start making all the decisions. You don't go to God. 
You don't go to prayer. You don't go to the word of God. You don't need any of those. Now you're just relying on your own ability. You forget who was behind your victory the whole time. Because what was their job? Their job was just to report on AI. That's it. Just report on it. Like, who's there, what not. That's it. Not to advise Joshua what to do. Isn't it funny a lot of times? Because, you know, we're like little spoiled brats, right? Yes. You know, you start telling your parents, you know, that's not how to do things, right? Let me show you how to do it, mom. Let me show you how to do it, dad. And majority of the time, if not all the time, it's a fail. Right? I'll show you how to do this. You know? They always think that they know better than their parents. Spiritually speaking, you, you always think that you know better than God. You say you don't, but your actions show otherwise. You become so overconfident. Yes. I mean, Achan becomes so overconfident. You know what? I've gotten away with it for the last, you know, two years. So I'm going to be okay. And some of you have gotten away for years and years. Man, if I'm new, I'll be scared to death, Yes. literally. If you've been playing around with sin, if you've been hiding sin, and if you've been lying to people about your sinful ways and sinful life and sinful thoughts and sinful, you know, acquaintance and everything and sinful communication, I'll be scared to death. Because before you know it, God's going to destroy you. Because Proverbs 6 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. You think God wrote this for just for fun? Because it's true. You have pride, you can have it destroyed. And what's the common characteristic of people who has pride? Stubborn. Very stubborn. Right? I mean, you should be stubborn against sin. Amen. You should be stubborn against other Bible. Amen. You should be stubborn against, you know, all these, you know, liberal humanistic agendas out there. Yes. You should be stubborn against anything, Word of God. You should be stubborn against people who doesn't stand, I mean, people who doesn't stand up for Jesus Christ. Amen. But when it comes to sin, you're super stubborn. Even though you have that guilty conscience, even though Lori is letting you know through preaching, through Bible study, through witnessing, you know, through the word of God, but you're so stubborn. It's okay, God. You know, it's almost like a little kid. When mommy says, don't eat that cookie, you ate it. You knew mommy saw it. You ate it. Mommy isn't doing anything. Like, oh, yeah, let mom. I'm just going to eat it, eat it, you know. Mom, you know, you're not going to do anything. And you start telling everybody, your friends, hey, do you get punished when you eat your mom's cookie? Every other children goes, yeah, man, I get, I get you know, spanked, you know. Not me. My mommy doesn't spank me, you know. I have like the coolest mom. But before you know it, mommy gives you the biggest whipping of your life. <laughs> yeah? And then you go back to your friends, hey, you know, if they're honest, they're like, hey, you know what? What I told you was wrong, you know. I just thought I've gotten away with it all this time. But when the time was right, I got punished. Yes. And person with a good biblical attitude will confess. I mean, whatever you say about Aiken, as we we'll study more, you know, later, and at least he was upfront about it. No? Yes. He said he did it. Amen. But how many of you guys ever even do that? Lord help us. I mean, Lord had to kill. Him and his entire family and his belongings stoned them to death, and then they were burned. I mean, 
you and I should thank God that we don't live in the Old Testament. Amen. I mean, thank God. Yes. How many of us would be still alive? I wouldn't. Not me. Man, I, I mean, if you are still, you know, fortunate to be alive, then you're probably walking on every dead body on the street. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Go through the Bible. How many people, I mean, there were so many. You, you're disobedient to your parents. You, you need to be die. You need yes. to be stoned to death. Yes. Man, how many of you guys were disobedient, right? I mean, there's a slew of sins. Yes. Then you and I shouldn't even be standing here today. No, sir. So these Israelites, they thought they could take AI with a relatively small force. No. They were about to lose everything. Right? The reason they had wanted Jericho was not because of them. Again, the reason why you're here today, the reason why you could be in the ministry, it's not because of you. It's never you. It's not because of your own power. Israelites forgot, these guys, that they, did, they wanted Jericho not because of their own military power. It's because the battle had been ordered by captain of the Lord. It's because God ordered the victory. That's why. That's it. There was no prayer here. Do you see any prayer? No prayer. No seeking God's face in this matter. And Joshua fell as well. Instead, Joshua follows the plans of man. What does that tell you? Right? If you are not close to God every second, every minute, even the great man of God will fall. That's what I tell you. Only thing difference between you and me is just responsibility. I mean, I could fall any second, right? Yes. You could fall any second. Yes. And what's the result of it? Let's go to verse 4. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the man of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shabarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted, and became as water. Again, entire population of Ai, both men and women, were about twelve thousand people. You know, when you see later in Joshua. The AI army was probably 6,000 or less, right? But what happened? That mighty Israel army who just defeated Jericho, mind you, it was all by because of God. Yes. 36 men died as a result of whose sin? Achan's sin. What Achan did affected innocent people. What you do will affect innocent people. Because of your actions, your family might have to give up their faith. Because of your sin, some people will be offended and they'll just leave. You know, when their church splits, there's always people who get offended. Because people... You know, we were doing street preaching on Friday, and Brother Daniel was talking to this lady. She goes, you know, why don't you just preach about love and love and love, you know? I mean, my brother brought up a great point, you know, in Book of Jude, you know. Through fear, people can get saved. Amen. Right? When you're not fearful of anything, you don't do anything. Right. All these liberal, all the humanistic people who preach love and preach love, they don't care. They'll never wake up. You have to tell them that you are going to burn in hell. Yes. Then there's a chance that you can get saved. Amen. Because if you just tell them love, 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 I mean, 
Are they ever going to understand that they're sinner on their way to hell? They need to get saved from hell? No. No. <laughs> See? And people have that kind of mentality. As Achan's sin affected innocent people, your mindset that God is love and God's not going to just cover everything with love is what the devil wants you to think. Yes. God is holy and just God. Amen. He showed his love on Calvary. Thank you, Lord. By sending his begotten son and our Lord and Savior shedding all his precious blood to save you and me from hell. Yes. That's the greatest love ever. Amen. Amen. But after you get saved, man, he's inside of you. Holy Spirit is in you to comfort you. Yes. And you're part of the body of Christ. I mean, that's the, I mean, you and I are, you know, receiving more blessing than you and I ever deserve. Amen. Right? Yes. Amen. I'll continue next week, but to end it today, Achan did what Achan did. Achan's sin affected innocent people. Your sin will affect innocent people. Your sin will affect your family. Your sin will affect the church, the body of Christ. But above all, your sin will be found out, and God will have to judge it. Yes. Throughout the Word of God and throughout the ministry, you see God will purge those people who take it lightly, who doesn't take it seriously when it comes to sinning in the camp. Our camp here, right, is church. Amen. You are that person. You are that Aiken. Hopefully it's not too late. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it's not about, I'm sorry, you Judas. Mm -hmm. God, I have a complete, total, truthful, sincere, repenting heart. Amen. And it shows by action, yes. not by words only. Let's pray.